I'd like to introduce Common Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley. And if any of you have ever attended a Veterans Affairs Committee hearing, you know that the Congresswoman is also a strong advocate for our veterans. Um, Congresswoman Berkeley has called Las Vegas her home for more than four decades and was the first and was first elected to the House of Representatives in 1998. She represents the families of Nevada's first congressional district, which includes Las Vegas. So if you have any problems here, talk to the Congresswoman. Um, North Las Vegas and uh, the unincorporated area of Clark County. As I mentioned, she sits on the um, House Veterans Affairs Committee as well as the Ways and Means Committee. And again, she is a very strong advocate for veterans. Congresswoman Berkeley. Oh, also, by the way, the Congresswoman was one of the first members of Congress to sign our pledge. So we, we already have her signature on the pledge. So I want to thank you. My pleasure. Thanks a lot, Joe. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the DAV. I want to welcome you to my hometown of Las Vegas for your 87th National Convention. It is a pleasure to have you here in my hometown and in my congressional district. And I am hoping when you are not attending these sessions, you are out in the casino enjoying our wholesome family entertainment. <laughs> now, I have to correct the chairman. We don't gamble in Las Vegas. It's gaming, gaming in Las Vegas. Now, I love this particular hotel, I got married here in this very room twice. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I, a special um, thank you to the commander, Commander Rob Reynolds, for being here and helping to select Las Vegas as the site of the 87th Convention. And to Joe, it's a pleasure to see you on my home turf. We see each other often in Washington at our VA committee hearings. To Chairman Chet Edwards, the best friend the veterans have in the United States Congress. Frankly, I would like to see him Vice President of the United States. <laughs> to my good friend and colleague, John Porter, it's a pleasure to share this podium with him, and I will look forward to hearing his words as well. My father, was a 17-year-old kid from the Lower East Side of New York when he enlisted in the Navy for World War II. My husband is a Vietnam-era veteran in the Army for nine and a half years. He retired as a major. I am a lifelong member of the Jewish War Veterans Auxiliary. My family believes in this country we believe in our military, and we believe we have an obligation and a responsibility to the men and women who serve this nation when they become veterans. Our veterans are entitled to the best health care we can provide, the best benefits we have to offer, the best emotional counseling, the best educational opportunities, the best financial support, and the most effective treatments available to anyone, anywhere. That's the least we can do for our veterans when they return. Now, support for our troops does not end at the edge of a war zone. If you want to demonstrate your support for our troops, you must support our veterans when they come home. And that is why, that is why I have signed the DAV Stand Up for Veterans Pledge. No one had to ask me, no one had to beg me. I did it because it was the right thing to do. And that is why I also support mandatory funding for our veterans' health care system. 
We are spending $4,000 a second in Iraq. No one's going to tell me this great nation can afford to provide our veterans with the health care they need and the treatment they deserve for the psychological wounds they carry with them when they return home. No, sir. We, they deserve it. We owe it to them. We need to pay that debt to our veterans. <laughs> Throughout this nation's history, Almost every generation has answered our nation's call to serve. Some do not return. They make that ultimate sacrifice. Others return and never look back. They're the lucky ones. Still others returned, much changed from when they first put on their nation's uniform. To those who have made this lifelong sacrifice, we owe a lifelong obligation, an obligation that is not a burden to this country. It is a privilege to honor. Providing for our veterans is part of the cost of going to war. If we are not prepared to fulfill this obligation to the men and women who willingly sacrifice for the rest of us, we ought not commit our troops to battle in the first place. This, this is a sacred commitment a sacred trust and bond between warrior and country. It cannot and should not be compromised, and it cannot, cannot be broken. There, there are over 200,000 veterans in the Las Vegas Valley. One of them is my 83-year young father. They could probably go to any hospital or any clinic in Las Vegas and have their health care taken care of. But they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to go any place. They want to go to a VA medical facility. My father wants to get his health care from the VA. He likes the doctors. He likes the care he receives. He likes seeing his buddies. Hell, he even likes the lousy coffee and donuts that the auxiliary ladies serve. He calls them toots and doll. They don't, they don't think that's sexual harassment. They love it. <laughs> as long as my dad and the millions of other veterans want their health care provided by the VA, well, I just think you fought for us, and by gosh, I'm going to fight for you and make sure this VA system stays intact and well-funded. <laughs> 